And good evening and welcome to your view with me on Kopote JJ Tawan. It's a doctor on call tonight here on your view as we explore further what the implications of the coronavirus is on everybody. Dr. Sibusiso uh, Kuzuayo joins me tonight. Thank you so much, doctor, for Thanks. coming Thanks. through. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You must be very busy now with everybody, even those who are not affected. Just come and say, please test me. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the flu season, so yeah. you do get that spillover, then everybody has a corona joke by the time they finish. <laughs> Tell me, uh, uh, who, should, who should come for testing then? Because surely it will collapse the system if everybody just Tests, with yeah. a small little cough. And I woke up with a bit of a, you know, a, a mucus, and I, you know, I was worried already. You say, oh God, do I have to go to work tonight? Mm -hmm. Then in you know, an hour or two, it was cleared up, so I could have rushed to the doctor. Uh, and to be spent, checked and find that I've wasted everybody's time. Can just just deal with that. Who should worry to say now is time to go to to present myself? Okay, so generally you just need to have the symptoms specifically, right? So mm. if you have the fever, malaise, if you have uh, difficulty breathing, obviously upper respiratory, runny noses and such. Mm. Um, then with that, you also have to have a either a positive travel history to these areas of concern. It's a pandemic now, so I suppose every area is an area of concern, mm. but specifically China, um, Italy, Europe, uh, UK, those kind of places. Yeah. So if you have the symptoms plus that travel history, or there's a proven contact. So if you are one of the contacts that were um, listed on somebody who's already been proven to have yeah. coronavirus, and then you start to develop those symptoms, then those people then yeah. would then request... But must it be those symptoms together, or if it's just one of those, you have to worry? In other words, you could have one and not the other four symptoms? How does it work? As long as you have a flu and you're not feeling well and yeah. it's uh, really stopping you from doing your normal day-to-day -day lives, yeah. then consult your doctor even over the phone, especially if you're worried about that it's specifically corona. Don't yeah. rush to the hospitals. Yeah. Uh, you can consult maybe and find a way to isolate yourself from other people so that when you are getting tested, you're not then exposing those people that, that are with you in the institution because you might actually end up con con making them contact as well and now they have to then get tested as well. So it's a bit of a touch and go situation where you need to be yeah. careful about how you actually approach the, the, the testing itself. Yeah, uh, because there was, there was a, a discussion during the week sometime um, about that people were turned away in some hospitals to say, no, 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 don't come here, go, to, go, go and get over-the-counter medication for flu, if you have flu, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that sounds inconsistent, because how will people know? If you just go over-the-counter without being checked, you may just mm -hmm. be treating the flu, only you find that it's the virus. Mm -hmm. How do you strike that balance? Because also if you go there and there's more than 100 people gathered there queuing, aren't you affecting others who may just be there for simple flu, mm -hmm. not corona? And because you are there, on the queue, you're affecting them. How are we dealing with that in terms of just public uh, uh, safety around yeah. this being, uh, presenting yourself in a public place? Uh, the surgery, in hospital, clinics, those are public places. In pharmacies, yeah. So then the history then becomes important. So if you, you have the symptoms and the history, then you are a high risk. Then you would have to then go through the protocols where you isolate yourself, don't go into pr crowded spaces, don't expose other people to what we are afraid you might or might not have. As soon as, because that test, test takes a, some time for it to be done, right? So you make yeah. those arrangements without being there face to face, or you try to if you can. The reason they turn you away from hospitals specifically yeah. would be because the hospitals would be the focal points for severe diseases. Yeah. So you don't want the hospitals to be overcrowded already with normal flus, yeah. whereas um, when the coronavirus comes in, there's 100 people in the unit that didn't need to be there. So they have to limit access to the hospitals currently because you want to reserve those or save those resources for when you actually have actual cases that have been proven and now you have to start to do the quarantine. Yeah. So I, I can't say I understand. So you have the symptoms, but if you and the present history. and the history. Yes. So that's the first point. Yeah. So in order for you to be tested, you have to go somewhere. Where do you go? So um, your doctor. Your doctor, not IRA, hospital. Not hospitals, not directly into the hospital. Don't directly into the casualties. You'll need those for yeah. emergencies. So but that sounds like a middle class issue. Because <laughs> yeah? these people, if, if I'm, if I'm in, in an informal settlement, we we'll, we'll, we'll have to go to a hospital. So or the clinic. Well, local clinic. So primary health care is, is, is there for yeah. primary health. So your GP is primary health care, your local clinic is primary health care, yeah, okay. whether in the private or pu uh, public sector. But don't rush to hospital, don't escalate don't, yourself. Yeah, yeah, automatically because you're coughing now, you're running off to the nearest big center that you can find. Yeah. Start small, build slowly, um, and then do the contact tracing. Because again, the, the thing about it is that you're trying to mitigate against further spread. Yes. So if you, it is finally found that you are positive uh, of the coronavirus, 
you should have self-isolated already. So in that time between the suspicions and the confirmation, you should be away from the general yeah. public, general population having self-isolated. Yeah. And that's the critical thing. Yeah, a report out of KZN dealt with this issue about isolation. But what does isolation mean for, for poor people, for people who are already uh, living on top of each other in, in former settlements? Let's take a look at that. Communal taps and toilets with rubbish piling up on the streets. Poor communities without efficient service delivery may crumble under the weight of a virus outbreak. Thousands of people who live here in the Cater Crest informal settlement work in the Durban CBD, about 10 minutes away. One case of the virus here would be disastrous, as already this tight-knit community has battled with sanitation. I'm so the people is buying food, everything for whole month. Me, I have no nothing to buy food. But the the, the news is talking to in the abas right to any zinjalo guzi anga ha ambingi yo ye esondo in. I'm not going to value. I'm not going church. I'm not going anywhere. The movement Abashlale Basem Jondolo, which represents shack dwellers across the country, says the health department needs to work with all stakeholders to form contingency plans. The situation as, as, as we currently see is a disaster. You know, when the president makes um, a condition that more than 100 people shouldn't be meeting, and we are saying that sounds like a joke because people are already squeezed and squashed in thousands. So you don't need to be meeting. Already their life is, 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 is a mess. Meanwhile, the KZN Health MEC says mass removals from infected settlements will occur if need be. Currently, we are now looking at different areas of isolation, of different areas of quarantining. In a, in a case when one positive case is identified, in say an informal settlement because in an informal settlement you are then going to be forced to remove everyone that is suspected in that area for newsroom africa on channel 405 i'm karinda jagmohan in cater crest durban all right <laughs> are, we, are we looking at the, at the public health explosion of some kind happening particularly informal settlements how can that be mitigated because i mean Quite clearly, if we're talking about self-isolation and there's a thousand people in one place, you, you, you're talking about the impossibility. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. That if, if our vulnerable po populations, which we have failed to provide for adequately in terms of sanitation, in terms yeah. of health care, in terms of all these resources that were supposed to be there already, because we have failed them, now when the crisis comes, it becomes a proper it's, it's disaster. It's going to catch up with us. Exactly. So we should have gotten these things right before we have a crisis. Now but we what, have a but crisis. But what are we going to do? Because we didn't get them right. There are people who don't have water, people who don't have running water, people who, are, who don't have toilets. There's a place in KZN, which the story was run here a few weeks ago, where they have one toilet for more than four or mm. five hundred people. So there already sanitation is an issue, right? So now you're asking those people to wash hands, which is going to be very, very difficult for them to do. So if anybody coughs in that population, you're already in trouble. So prevention then would be better than pure, cure, right? Having, making prevent? sure that the guys that we have identified yeah. that have the, um, the we, coronavirus, we remove them, we remove them from society so that they don't get to. Then the guys that they've been in contact with, yeah, this, we trace those people yeah. and test those people. So the strategy is isolation, yeah. testing, 
tracing and treatment. It sounds like a whole military operation. It has especially, to be a whole. Mm, especially mm, when we mm. talk about the informal settlement. Yes, exactly. Let's go to the lines now. Helen, in the walk home. Good evening. Good evening, JJ. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm fine. What, what, I just your... wanted to find out from the doctor. Yes. Uh, you know, since we couldn't find um, sanitizers around here, yeah. so we decided to buy um, uh, surgical spirits in, you know, it as a different character. So I wanted to find out from the doctor. I, I didn't, I didn't like catch that. You, you decided to buy what surgical instead? Spirit. Surgical uh, spirit. Surgical okay. spirit, yes. Okay. So I wanted to find out from the doctor if it's safe to use, is it completely safe to use, and also on kids, because uh, I wouldn't know if, I, I don't know if it's safe for, for us to use it also on Surgical kids, spirit, just stay, stay on the line. I don't know where she got the surgical spirit from, but is it safe? Yeah, for external uses. So surgical spirit is the stuff that they use for babies to clean their umbilical cords when they are born, for example. Yeah, yeah. It is a disinfectant. Um, it's got low alcohol con con concentration. Yeah. The higher the alcohol concentration in any solution, the better it actually disinfects. Yeah. You need to put it onto your hands and allow it to dry so that it, the, the oh, stuff... Oh, you don't wash it off. You don't but, use it no, like a soap. Just let it, just let it yeah. e evaporate off, because that alcohol actually is, is, is flammable, is, is um, combustible, so it just yeah. uh, evaporates from your hands. So no problem there with surgical spirit, but it, it, is, 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 is it not dangerous to use on hands when mm. you now have to go and eat? Not necessarily. Same, if it evaporates off, then you're okay. Um, the problem is with it is it doesn't have as high a concentration, for example, as hand sanitizer and things like that. So you might find that it's the concentration of the alcohol which you want yeah. to disinfect you or the disinfectant itself might be lower than what is required but any yes. effort actually works so right. you, the, the more, more that you try to use those disinfectants the better chance you have at keeping away any infection including then this corona as well. Alright, uh, I don't know whether Helen is still on the line but thank you Helen uh, for your call there uh, is safe, you, you, the doctor has given it all clear, you can give us a ring now if you want to participate in the conversation, you want to ask the doctor any questions around corona that you may not be sure of. Uh, by the way, government passing a law to stop fake news, eh? big development there. So, uh, you know, uh, while people are, are busy with jokes around corona, be careful not to find yourself on the wrong side of the law. Let's take a break now. And good evening and welcome back uh, to your views. Doctor on call tonight. You can give us a ring, any uh, question that you may have for the doctor here tonight. Doctor, they, they, there's this often refrain that says people with underlying conditions, they, they give you their nice, you can just break it down. What, what is that all about? They say people with underlying conditions are more at risk. Yes, so you must remember this is a new infection, a new virus. Nobody mm. knows about it, so we're learning things as we go along. Mm. And one of the things we found is that the elderly tend to be more affected and people with, like you're saying, underlying or pre-existing conditions. Now, it affects mainly your uh, respiratory system, so your lungs in particular. Yeah. So if you have previous lung infections, uh, lung conditions, emphysemas, if you are the elderly and your immune system is weak, uh, maybe cancer patients, diabetic patients and things like that. If you have pre-existing conditions that predispose you to uh, adverse effects from your lungs pre predispose you to a weakened immune system because mm. you have to fight this for a long time. So for example, uh, in Italy, for example, they had infections that were booming three weeks ago and now they're starting to get the death rate to catching up with the infection rate sure. where the death rate is now going up as well exponentially yeah. whereas three weeks back. The reason for that is the last three weeks people have been fighting this infection and the elderly unfortunately are, are don't have in. the disease. And the elderly, the ones with pre-existing lung conditions, the ones with weakened immunities, can't fight for that long, you see. And that's what then leads to, to unfortunately, their, their, their demise. Yeah. Mm. 3,405 3, deaths in Italy. That's huge. That's huge. Like, now, if you look More at... Uh, let's talk about HIV. Mm. Right. The TB thing was exacerbated by HIV. Is, exactly. Are we on that? Because we've got, what, 7 million people, uh, you know, HIV positive? It's a huge number. It's a huge is, number. Is that a, 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 a bomb waiting to happen there? Precisely. So that's the same. What can those people do to, to interject? Again. Isolation. Isolation again. So, so if you know you have a pre-existing condition and you're vulnerable with a weakened immunity or pre other conditions as well, you need to then, when you start getting a flu, separate yourself from everybody else. If you have a travel history or yeah. a positive But contact, before you get a flu, you know you're HIV positive, what, what do you do? So hand sanitizers, yeah. right, uh, coughing into your shoulders um, or your elbows, uh, social distancing, 
those kind of things that they are encouraging us to do now. Um, those are ways to try and protect yourself. Uh, your personal protection equipment, so your face masks, your yeah. gloves and things, to try and protect you from catching things. Yeah. Look, to be honest, the, the, the masks that we use now are not very good for inwards. They protect you once you have something from not giving it to other I people. See. So but basically the masks are popular infected really. Yeah. If you're not infected, the masks are not useful. Yeah, because you're breathing. Now, people mustn't yeah. go out there and buy masks, man, in, please, in, in please. huge quantities. It doesn't work. Benjamin in Mutlakeng, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm right. Mm, what's on your mind? Hey, Here am I now. Lyric, okay, Kinaliona. Kinaliona. Gano, Kibako, Tlorka treatment. Treatment, I can quarantine. Yeah, treat you a cup of it. All right. Uh, what, what happens when now you have been diagnosed? Is there a particular treatment that's already on the table or, or, or they just treat the flu or treat whatever it is that's wrong? It's, it's symptomatic treatment, right? So depending on your severity, if you need more oxygen, they'll give you more oxygen. If you can't really breathe on your own, they'll put you on a ventilator. There's only a thousand plus available ventilators in the country at any one time. So if the current trajectory that is happening internationally happens here, you might not be able to put everyone on that, which is exactly the problem. So that's why you need to prevent it before it happens. Yeah. So treatment is actually symptomatic. Um, if you prevent with mild symptoms, we just quarantine you, yeah. we observe you over a while, take your monitoring, your temperatures, yeah. see you how your breathing is, if you're producing any more things, how much oxygen is, is going through your system. If you need extra oxygen, we'll give you that much. If you need extra fluids, we'll give you much more. If you have a fever, we'll bring that down. Okay. Um, and so it's supportive management until your body can recover. Like I said, unfortunately... So no, it's, it's not a specific treatment for corona as such. They no, treat no. the symptom. They, it's like oh, treating an opportunistic infection, infection yeah. and, and, and disease. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin, I hope you, you, you heard that. I'm not sure whether Benjamin is still on the line there. This quarantine story. Yes. If I get it and, and, and I live with my wife and children, what, what happens there? Would the self-isolation means that I'm going to infect these other people? Yes. So the self isolation happens before you're confirmed. Because once you're confirmed, you're in a proper quarantine now. So the quarantine means you're... Self isolation is step one. Yeah. So it's just, I'm not feeling okay. Let me not hang out with all my friends at one time. Yeah. Let me just, while I check, while I see if I'm improving, yeah. let me just not in, engage with anyone yeah. else. Obviously, you can do that at home. WHO um, suggests that um, even mild cases be sent to hospitals if you can. But obviously, our uh, systems would not allow for every flu or every coronavirus to end up in a hospital. So you have to really, the guys who are mild can then be on a sort of a step-down facility. You would have noticed that people were quarantined uh, somewhere in Limpopo instead of them being sent back home. That's a strategy that tries to then isolate the people who are at risk. Yeah. Right. And then the contacts, so they do contact tracing, that last T I was telling you about. Yeah. They trace so who you everybody will be tested who was isolated with, with you. you. Yes, who was with you will be tested. Yeah. That's contact tracing now. Yeah. And those people, who were, they, who were they in contact with? See, so the surveillance in that helps mitigate against yeah. rapid spread because they need to find out quickly whether yeah. the people you... Once you are positive, then you get out of the house to yes. be quarantined in a facility somewhere yes. else. Yeah. That's, that's the recommendation, whether or not it's able, we're able to do it. Depends, obviously, on, on the individual country's yeah. resources or even province for that matter. Mark Dillin, or Dillin Mark, in Brimfontein. Good evening. The day I come there, this is the This is Mark Dillin from Lynn. Oh, Mark Dillin, all right. Doctor, I just want to inquire, what distance can the water travel between species? Between human beings and another human beings? And how long can it survive? Out of, out of human body or out of animal body. And then um, we are aware that uh, this thing, uh, we are made aware of it during the change of season. And we know that uh, change of season affects other people, like other people's immune become so low in such a way that uh, symptoms, signs and symptoms of sinusitis uh, are experienced. So people are now desperate because of the introduction of the virus now. And people tend to think rather than uh, focusing on their normal health, knowing very well that on a certain season, my immune becomes yes. low resistance and then 
Uh, this is about experience. So all, all right, Magdalene. Like all right, Magdalene. So a lot of stuff there. Let's pick the issue about how long it survives. That, that, that whole thing. Has it been established or are we still doing no, guesswork? We're, we're still doing a lot of uh, internet. The, the recommendations are six feet, which is obviously clearly an American setup. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, as far as a cough can travel, for example, so within arm's distance between the two of us, yeah. which is why then you need to create that space between people yeah. so that you don't get easy spread. Um, it stays in the air um, for a while. We, I'm not sure the exact times, but apparently on harder surfaces, so your woods, your glass, your yeah. steel, it lasts longer there. Um, on softer surfaces, not, not so much. Yeah. Uh, but it's through droplet spray, meaning um, you cough and it's in the air. If I walk past you after you've coughed, I will now have that in my face. If I touch a surface that had the virus on, on it, um, then I've touched my face. Now I've introduced the virus onto my face. I breathe it in, and then I have it. So the distances, we are still working it out. Um, yeah. I've heard days, um, days, um, hours as, as reference points, but I'm not too sure exactly how long, maybe on glass, for example, versus tiles or versus wood yeah. glass. But I know that it does actually, uh, the virus seems to stand um, much longer, or su survive much longer on hard surfaces um, yeah. and stays in the air much longer. Well. Have we analyzed in terms of the deaths, mm -hmm. uh, for example, the ones in Italy? Well, you know, is, uh, is there data that's showing us what, what were the causes of those deaths? Is it more just collapse of the immune system largely or what? So it's usually a respiratory compromise, meaning their, their, their lungs eventually give in. They're too clogged up, they're too dense, they can't do gaseous exchange, and they eventually just fail to, 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 to breathe. Right? Uh, even on the ventilator sometimes you find that um, it's just too much of a strain, it's been going on for too long, and they eventually succumb to their, to their deaths. Uh, but it's very, very variable. So in Italy, we were running at 10%. And Germany, which is not too far away, you're running at 1% to 2%. So the, the, the variation in the mortality rates um, is still being investigated as to what exactly about yes. those populations makes them more vulnerable. There is an age correlation, so the older you are, there is a um, comorbidity co correlation, so the more diseases and infections and other things that you have, you're more likely to then get yeah. the more severe form of this. Yeah. Mm. All right. We're going to take some more of your calls uh, I hope Magdalena has, has answered that she had a, quite a lengthy question. But I think what, what, what she's emphasizing is, uh, you know, people must focus on taking care of their health generally. Up front, yes. As All part of, yeah. of trying to, 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 to avoid... To to have, have, All of these things are, are everyday common things. We are supposed to be washing our hands. We are supposed to be keeping social differences. Yeah. When we're ill, we're supposed to actually stay at home. It's just it's more critical now because we're yeah. in crisis mode. But generally speaking, these are bread and butter, primary health care things that we can do for ourselves and for each other to kind of protect ourselves from getting common colds and in this particular case, something a bit more severe. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of the capacity, I mean, you work in this sector, the capacity of particularly primary health care. I mean, there was a story or two this week where they were talking about a clinic that doesn't have water. I mean, a clinic that doesn't have How are they even doing basic mm. interaction with, 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 with patients, even on a normal day, forget about the coronavirus? I mean... Is this, in your view, a widespread thing, or, or, or is it something that probably, with a little bit of edging by, to the health department, can be attended to? So let's make sure that that first contact, first, first point of contact where you come and present yourself, you know, they don't make through. things worse. Yeah, so primary health care in this country is, is not doing very well. Um, in terms of just basic things that we're supposed to get right even before that. So um, that's why it's a whole of government kind of intervention now, but it's supposed to be a whole of government intervention throughout, right? So the sanitation department, the, the water phase has to be able to provide water to everything. The municipalities have to then transmit that water to yeah. basic uh, services. If we were getting those things right, we would be better able to cope with them crises when they occur. What we're doing now is, 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 is chasing our tail, where we find that the places, like you're saying, the infrastructure has crumbled. We haven't been able to put it together for a variety of reasons, and people will tell you about uh, failures in government and, and, and such. Uh, yeah. That's not my, my faculty. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna say, when we can't do the basics right at a governance level, then mm -hmm. in the crisis times, we end up with egg on our face and um, lives on our hands. So we need to get those things right up front. Those clinics need to be running like clockwork even before anything happens. And if we're not getting that right, we are going to get other things wrong down the line. Mm, 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 mm. What, 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 what do you feel generally? I mean, how is the medical profession feeling about this? I mean, is this, in a sense, distracting you from 
your normal consultations? Do you find that mm. uh, suddenly you know you are, you are now dealing with flu, uh, and 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 you now have to deal less mm -hmm. with clients with with uh, what you can call tertiary complications, so to, for lack of a better description. So. Um, yes, in a, in, a, in a sense, like I said, this is the flu season, so it's usually a busy time for, for all med medical pr practitioners, especially physicians and pediatricians like myself. Uh, and so if you have a room full of people that you walk into, for example, maybe you don't have an appointment system, you have to change the way you work now because you can't have all those people sitting in the same room coughing at each other because oh now goodness. you're making things work, worse, right? So now you have to go into an appointment system. So you have to change the way you do work. So, uh, for example, GPs, um, it's, it's, it's a volumes-based kind yeah. of model, right? So if you walk into your rooms and there's 20 people, you're happy. In this particular instance, if you walk into the rooms and there's 20 people, you think, yeah, if one person here has it, Everybody here is going to have to get contact traced, yeah. isolated, quarantined, and such and such and such. So it does change. And you now have protective gear for everything now, as, as, as doctors? You can't. You, you, you can't. Well, as doctors, yes. So you need to, to, to reserve the protective gear for the people who need it, right? Yeah. So your best bet, if you are now having symptoms, you shouldn't spread it. So get yourself a mask, get yourself some gloves, wash your hands yeah. all the time. But you shouldn't yeah. now hoard things in your house <laughs> and then the doctors don't have access Goodness. to the hospitals because yeah. now everybody's has cleaned out the hand sanitizers yeah. and the toilet paper. Somebody was hoarding photocopy paper on picture. I just like, why? Yeah, they're going to work from home. Le Lebu in Porsche through. <laughs> Good evening. Yes, how are you today? Brief, briefly, Lebu, we'll run out of time. Yeah, about food, man. I haven't heard people talking about food. How can food help for health purposes for coronavirus? Like, for an example, flu, you must take vitamin C. And I've never yet talking about food, what people can eat. Food, all right. Thank you, Level. We got it. Quickly, doctor. So, a. Food advice, diet, diet, dietary advice then. Yeah. A healthy diet leads to a healthy immune system. And a healthy immune system is better able to cope with any challenges, including then. Well, eventually, if we can get the immunity up and running, yeah. coronavirus. So the population generally needs to be healthy so that it can protect itself against minor flus and then be better able to mitigate against severe illnesses. So a healthy diet is, is a critical part of primary health care. So if we get that right, at least when we do have uh, outbreaks like this, our bodies are better able to cope with the uh, strains that, that that new infection puts on our, on our systems. All right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, so Thank you for your time. I hope you will be able to come back. I think there will be lots of people who have wanted to come in, but maybe we can uh, do it uh, twice or thrice because it looks like we're going to be sit staying with this it's gonna be situation a for a while. It's going to be here a while, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Dr. Suso Kuzuayo there uh, helping us tonight on Doctor on Call, a new feature here on your view where you can call the doctor directly. No, no, no guesswork about it. All right, but take care of yourself. Do continue to wash those hands and keep safe. Let's take a break now.